Think back to when you last shopped for groceries. Do you remember the cashier? Many people deal with feeling invisible in their lives in a variety of ways, but none as unique as my next guest, who channels her frustrations into her art. She wrote and illustrated a book about the aging woman whose eventual death was almost not even discovered. Her unsettling yet humorous drawings capture her secret inner ponderings of existence, thoughts we all have on some level. My next guest has a degree in fine arts and also one in addiction therapy. She spent 10 years as a hard drug addiction therapist at Donwood Institute in Toronto until the pressure eventually caused her to quit to save her sanity. She then moved to the country and took up drawing and painting as a way to soothe her soul. She's the author of Broken Balloons and has just released her second book, The Secret Life of Doris Melnick. Please welcome my friend, Gail Prusky. Hello, Gail. Hi there, Deborah. <laughs> Glad you are here to join us today and, uh, uh, and talk about uh, your book uh, a little bit because I read it and uh, it's a story about an aging woman's life. And this woman, Doris Melnick, she worked as a cashier at Food World. And although she showed up every day for work, she felt that she was somewhat invisible. But her internal world didn't match her external world. Do you have anything to say about that? (laughs) Um, No, other than the fact that I think that's the case with a lot of people. Um, There's a heck of a lot more going on under people's under the surface than we realize. And she was a very, very classic example of that. (laughs) She she was very much different on the inside than she was on the outside. Yeah. And, and your book really uh, tells that story through, through other people's eyes, which it's, it's really interesting to, uh, uh, to, to notice how people see us in a different light and also how we see ourselves. So your book really shines a light on, on that perspective. So I, I have um, an idea, Gail. I, I think it would be really fun. What if we could channel Doris back from the dead so we could get to know her better? What do you say? I think that's a fantastic idea. I'm sure she has a <laughs> lot to tell us. <laughs> yeah, because because the the book is all about people talking about her, and uh, we don't actually get to get to know her f- except from other people's eyes. So um, she did yeah. she did journal a bit in the book, though. She did you did you get a little insight into her, her mind. Right. So we're going to hear it from Doris's mouth. So we're going to do some channeling. So <laughs> Gail, hold hold my hands. Okay, hold it on. Okay. Doris, Doris Melnick, are you here? She's here. <laughs> I mean, I'm eating cheesecake. Will, will, will you speak with us? Uh, n- knock twice for yes and once for no. Ah, she is. She's here. So, uh, so Doris, um, we've got some questions to to ask you today. We understand that you were intrigued by the changes in your body as time went by. Uh, how do you feel about cellulite and body fat? <laughs> they became my friends. They became my friends. As I watched, I would look at myself in the mirror every day as I got older. And at first I was shocked uh, and a little bit frightened. And then it began to be quite fascinating. I mean, I wake up in the morning and there'd be all these new spots on me and, 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 um, new new wrinkles where there weren't any wrinkles but the most wonderful day was the day when I was at the cash and I heard this flapping sound when I was working on the cash register and I didn't know where it was coming from and it was it was my underarms flapping and I and I got began fascinated with it it was just like flapping away and I mean I, I took a break and went to the ladies room and just watched it for a while <laughs> and, 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 and after that it just became a very 
interesting experience, just watching my body change. And I, and I, it, it didn't upset me anymore. I just found it really quite, really quite interesting. That's all. <laughs> It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Um, your connections with people, they, they seem to be only in your head. Were you lonely? It's hard for me to admit that now. Um, but I was a very, very lonely person. And, and I think that's why I used to draw so much. I would create all these people that could be my, my friends in my world. I would create, I would create these worlds that at, out of my head and I didn't feel so lonely anymore. So, so, but I never, I would have never admitted that when I was alive. You know? mm. Also, I would, I would also create a lot of monsters because that helped me deal with the monsters and also helped me deal with my emotions because I would get really angry at work. I would get really angry at, at especially the, the woman behind the deli counter who always gave me rotten macaroni. And so I, so I'd go home that night and I would draw her, I would draw her, being eaten by rabid wolverines and and that would and that would help and then I could let it go so it it, my drawing was my was my therapy and it kept me from killing people (laughs) (laughs) so did you would you say that there's any benefit to growing older well I can I can see that now from the other side but I couldn't really when I was alive but now that I see I can see now that you stop caring so much. You stop worrying so much about being judged or what people, people think about you. Um, and, and that's a really, really good thing. And uh, let me see. I, I, I used to always feel invisible in the world, but as I got older, I started to feel more invisible. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. On, on the one hand, I liked being invisible because then I could be more of a, a watcher. But as it got older, it just felt like I was fading, you know, and and so that wasn't so good. Yeah. Do you have any regrets? Oh, yeah, if I have to admit it, I guess I have lots of regrets. I mean, I I was so I had I had more than one mask. I probably wore about 20 masks and that's the way I hid and I protected myself and I never let anybody in. And it never occurred to me. It does now. Um, that I'm at peace, but it never occurred to me that there might be other women like me out there that were as lonely as I was or felt as cut off as I was. And and that never came into my mind and, and that there might have been other people like me. And, and I could have had connections in my life, but it's it's too late now. Mm-hmm. And, and my other regret is, well, I, have to, I, I might as well tell you what difference does it make? I'm dead, right? I, I I never even kissed a man, let alone anything else. And I had kind of a crush on Dwayne, the produce manager. Well, it was a huge crush. And nothing ever came of it because I, I was so scared. I would, I would creep up and, and, and watch him stack his produce. And, and all I could do was look at his turnips. <laughs> I, 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 could, I never got brave enough to talk to him. And I so I really regret that. I was just never never held and and nobody should go through life never being held Mm -hmm. so with with the produce manager if you had plucked up enough courage to speak with him do you have any ideas of what kind of life you might have had something other than I like your turnips Dwayne I I don't I don't know I can't even imagine what it would have been like I mean if I had been brave enough to talk to him and if he had actually responded and maybe even liked me, I I can't even imagine what my life would have been like. No, I can't. Because it was just a life of loneliness. And I just never even tried to imagine anything else. Even when I watched movies or on television and, and, and saw couples together and being in love, I never pictured myself in that place. I just never did. It was like it was like my destiny to just be this lonely old woman. Mm-hmm. You mentioned that you didn't handle aging well and that nobody prepared you for what you two experienced. What might have helped you feel more prepared or able to deal with the inevitable changes, do you think? Well, I never had, uh, I was never close with my mother. So she never told me too much about 
you know, what it was like to be an older woman. And I never talked to any of my any women at work. So I had, I certainly wasn't prepared for menopause. <laughs> I certainly wasn't. I mean, I didn't know what was going on with my body. I didn't understand my mood swings. And it would have been really nice to have had another woman to talk to in those days. You no, know, I, it just, I think it just made me more bitter and it made my drawing stranger. <laughs> stranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And now that you're 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 you've passed on uh, and you're talking to us from the other side, perhaps you have maybe more of a perspective uh, that you didn't have before. And and I'm wondering why do you think you concealed your true self? I think it was fear. I, I think it was fear of being judged. I think it was a fear of feeling different and and feeling that that I was alone in the world, that there was nobody else like me. And, uh, and now from the other side, I can see that there are many, many women who feel the same way. You know, I mean, you can, you can walk into a party and the most beautiful woman there will be just as insecure and and frightened as I am. And I didn't know that then, you know, I, I mean, I thought I was the only one. And that's something that I see clear now. Um, and also, I guess another, one of my regrets that I was afraid to open up. Is there anything, um, that you wanted to share with us from, from your perspective on the other side? You don't have to choose to be lonely. I mean, I, I didn't see it as a choice when I was alive. I, I, I thought it was, like I said before, I thought it was my destiny, you know, and then that, that I was going to be this unhappy woman and, and, and it, it was my parents' fault and it was, but it was everyone else's fault. But but now I look back and I see that it was a choice I made and, and and it was a choice to keep myself walled up. And it was a choice I made to keep myself uh, away from p- other people. And, and I, I just would want people to know that you're only gosh, you're, you're only there once and it goes really fast. And and I didn't even know I was going to die. I, it was in my bed at night. I was sleeping and then I was gone and, and I had no warning. So so. I mean, if I could go back, if I could go back, I'd start to take the masks off one by one. I, I think I would be brave enough to take a chance and, and, and let other people see me. And, and I think that would have given me the chance to have met other people just like me and, mo- and mostly other women. I can't think about men too much, but I think I, I could have used some other women in my life. So, mm. so I think that's one thing I, I can look back and see from this side. And another regret, I suppose. It's another regret. Yeah. Wow. Well, thank you, Doris. We'll we'll leave you now so that you can continue to live on the other side of the veil there. And may you rest in peace. (laughs) Well, well, this was fun. If I come back again, will you have cake? (laughs) Well, absolutely. (laughs) As long as it's from uh, Food World, right? (laughs) Oh no, theirs was horrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. This was this was fun. I really this was fun visiting. Gail, your your yeah. art obviously expresses inner frustrations and, and the way that you're feeling. Do you feel any better after you've drawn or painted? Oh, I can't tell you how much better I feel. <laughs> I mean, I I can I can absolutely dissipate my anger my my frustrations um by drawing it's been wonderful for me um like i like i i said and for doris too I mean, it was it was it's therapy it's uh, and i and i feel so lucky that i can do this you know i think everybody needs to have something where they can express themselves or or, or at least at the very least zone out because the other thing that my my drawing and my art does for me is it gives me this this time to block out the rest of the world and to and to just zone out and it's really really important especially with all the chaos we're living with now and all the tension and uh, and unhappiness and and sickness that it'll keep you going if you have something whether it's music or or a sport um something and for me it's been my drawing and and i'm i'm very grateful for it yeah so are we (laughs) to to get to experience what goes on in your head (laughs) It's quite quite phenomenal. But not everybody would say that. But I'm- it's very unique. That that is for sure. But um, you know, it helped me uh, get to know 
another side of you as well, which was quite an honor to be able to to learn that. I, I wonder what reaction do you hope to evoke from the readers of your book, The Secret Life of Doris Melnick? If it just gets people to start looking at other people and thinking, hmm, maybe there's more than more to them than meets the eye, that would be wonderful. Even better for them to start looking at themselves and, and seeing whether they're, if they themselves are their real self when they're out in the world, you know, or if they're, if they're wearing masks or if they're afraid just to let go of all that and, 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 and be who we are because we are really here for a very short time, you know, and, and uh, I, I hope that, that that's what it opens up for people. And then, like I, I told you before, one of my, my, one of my good friends said that now she goes to the supermarket and she looks at the cashier differently. And I think that's <laughs> fabulous because she probably never even paid attention to the cashier before. And now she's thinking, <laughs> What goes on in this woman's life? So I think that's fabulous. We'll never look at cashiers as invisible again. That's right. That's right. (laughs) Beautiful. It's great advice. So where where can listeners buy your book, Gail? Well, if they're it's available on Amazon, Amazon Amazon.com, Amazon.ca, and uh, hopefully it's delivered on time because Amazon's been kind of challenging lately. And for those of, of and any of people who live in the Orangeville area, it's available at Booklore in Orangeville. Booklore on First Street. Yeah, that's 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 a lovely bookstore. Yes, it is. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Gail. Any ending message that you'd like to share with us? Go out and live and take off the damn masks. That's all. Well, actually, <laughs> no, that's not right. I can't say that now. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Wear the right mask. <laughs> take all the others off. <laughs> yeah, it's a little challenging these days, isn't it? <laughs> I go around telling everybody to take off their mask. Can't do that anymore. Just realize that. <laughs> wow. Well, this has been Gail Prusky and Deborah Jones. And we thank you for listening. And we hope thank you enjoyed you. The, the podcast as much as we did, as much as I did. And please leave your comments and questions at ownthegray.ca and share it with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. So thanks again. 